Hello there, Fred Wagner here. Papa's painting tips, or maybe what I'm going to call my channel now is Papa's Art Studio. Uh, I just am working on something uh, not brand new to me, but uh, something new to my channel. Um, I've done a couple things with this before, but I just thought I would broaden my horizons. I've got, uh, let's, let's pull these up. Um, I've been working on a colored pencil uh, drawing for my wife, uh, doing a bunch of portraits for her. I, I picked up a set of luminance, uh, just a 20 piece set of luminance by Karen Dosh, uh, or Karen Diachi. I don't know how you say it. I'm not French or Swiss. So anyways, uh, I'm working with these right now and I'm expanding my horizons as an artist, uh, branching out further from, uh, doing just airbrush. Uh, I, I really feel as artists, we need to expand our knowledge and that helps us with our core of uh, our creativity. So I just hope you stick around and watch this little short video. It compares, excuse me, uh, in comparison to uh, my normal videos, which are hours and hours. I'm just doing a little section of this and uh, you'll see that coming up. So hey, let's get started and uh, I hope you enjoy. And uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and you can support me on PayPal uh, if you'd like. I will give my uh, email address for my PayPal account. And if you'd like to support me to help me to expand my supplies and ability to uh, grow and help you grow, uh, please uh Feel free to help me out and uh, support me through that way. Um, I never asked for support before, uh, but you know times are different and they keep changing, and it's getting harder and harder to afford uh, all these supplies to keep growing my channel and helping all of you guys out there to learn and to grow in your knowledge. Okay, God bless. Stick around and give a watch, not an actual physical watch, but give a look and enjoy. I hope I can teach you something today. How we doing today? Pop a paint and tip, you may have noticed I'm not working with airbrush. Nope. Today we're uh, rolling with colored pencils. I'm uh, teaching myself how to use colored pencils more effectively. I, I mean, I used them as a ch child kid. You know, uh, in my youth. But anyways... Yeah, I've got uh, Karen Dosh Luminance pencils. I just got a small portrait set. I also have the Karen Dosh uh, watercolor or water soluble. Let me see. Hang on. Uh, I think they're called Aquila fan color. Um, they're a water soluble. Uh, most all of this has been done with the water soluble colored pencils. I know it looks a little blotchy and goopy and stuff, but there's lots of colors going on in here. And you probably can see some of the scratchings in that due to the angle and the lighting in here is not the greatest for this. That might be a little less glaring, my uh, 
art lamp. And I just can't see the true color when I do that. But anyways, uh, turn that back on so I can see. And what I'm doing here, and I don't know uh, how many will follow this or not. I'm not going to do a whole long video of this. But I just thought I'd show a little bit, a quick little clip of what I'm working on. This is Isaiah McKenzie off the bu from the Buffalo Bills. Awesome, awesome football player. Yes, I'm a fan of the Buffalo Bills. I used to say, well, you got to support your home team because I'm in New York. Now I say, I love the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I, you're probably saying that's biased. But anyways, back to... Uh, <laughs> my little artwork here what I've done what I did was I used uh I used my camera uh lucida app to do my setup lines uh like the position of my eyebrows the eyes the nose a lot of people use them and they just trace everything over uh, which is fine if you want to do that. It saves lots of time to set up and less chance of error. Um, but it, for me this time, I wanted to really truly feel like I drew this picture. I'm doing a series of the Buffalo Bills uh, for my wife. But anyways, um, what I've done is I, I take this pencil and I've seen a lot of people, they'll go back and forth like this and and then they go in and they fill the lines or fill in the paper. One thing I've noticed that uh, this is uh, Bristol, um, Strathmore Bristol Smooth, uh, 300, I think it was 300 gram paper. Uh, it, it, it's got not as much uh, texture on the paper but there is some and you can see that by you know there's a little, maybe little pockets where I didn't quite fill in and it the pencil skipped but you can remedy that you got to take your time and go over it slow and touch in these little spots but for me when I look at uh an example I see all those little details popping out at me and in skin uh, texture there is that because it normally when you look at art you're not supposed to look at it like you're reading a book you're not supposed to be right on top of it you gotta go step back a few feet let everything blend together because your eyes gonna just blend it for you um, and then all these little colors tie together. And you notice I've got violets, I've got pinks, I've got reds, I got yellows. And that's because in uh, in real life, oops, I lose control of my hand sometimes. <laughs> in real life, you've got uh, a lot of reflecting colors surrounding and bouncing off flesh. So anyways, back to my technique here that I'm using. I'm layering this color pencil color very, very carefully and slowly, paying attention to the shapes of the shadows and, uh, and the movement of the, the skin tone and values. and such like that. So, and what I'm doing is I've got this color here, which is, uh, let's see if I can read that. I can't even read it. It says dark flesh, 40%, pencil number 745. And I'm just layering uh, over what I originally 
put down. I kind of use a circular pattern like this and real small little strokes. I don't want to push pressure because if I push pressure, I'm going to push down that uh, tooth of the paper is what it's called. And I won't be able to get as much color on this as I'd like. Now with the luminance pencils, uh, I just started using these ones. Uh, just got a, a small set in just to test them out. Um, I'm finding that it very easily transfers down to the paper. And you've, it's a little bit of, more of a creamier pencil. And I think it's really, I, I'm really liking this medium. It takes a long time to develop uh, these textures and values and laying down the color. I also found that if you keep a pointier tip on your pencil, you have an easier time lightly filling in that tooth without burnishing down that tooth of the paper. Now, once you burnish down, you can use the side of the pencil and go over in what oil uh, painting artists would call glaze it. And it'll tint, overall tint it. I, I can redo that. I'm going to also, since this has all been burnished down, I'm going to hit it with some fixative after and maybe go back in. go back in and uh, layer a little more on top because that'll give you almost like a tooth back on the paper. But anyways, I'm building my value very, very slowly. I don't want to make this all monochrome. I don't have to. But in this area, this is his uh, beard growth. So there's a lot of hairs that are going to go into this. So I don't want to, I don't want to burnish down that tooth of the paper too far. Another thing I've did a little bit of is I did figure eights, just like with airbrush, and that'll also give you the creation of the pores. Doing that little tiny figure eights. Now, let me say this though. I am not anywhere as close to hyper realistic like some of the artists, color pencil artists out there that can do the hyper realistic uh, colors. So there's that. I'm going to work in a little bit different color now he's got a he's got a lot more red i picked up this yesterday it's a kum uh pencil sharpener k-u-m kum and it's got three sharpener or four sharpening blades in it excuse me for a second i get those it's got this is for the main uh blade or the barrel of the pencil. And then you go over here and this will sharpen the tip more because the angle is different on it. So let me quick do this. Um, I think, now he's got a lot of green reflected from the ground surrounding him when this photo was taken, but he's also got some uh, nice reds in the skin tone. So this is how you work with this. You start on this side. You got two holes here. My other pencil sharpener broke. So we're going to start with this. This is the only part I don't like about this pencil sharpener. 
is you begin to not be able to see what you're doing. But I'm taking that, and if you notice the way the tip of the pencil is going past that blade. Okay, now we're at a point. It's kind of an odd-shaped tip here. It's fat. Let's get this off of here. Now you go into the second side over here, and that'll sharpen that tip. See how it's just shaving the tip down. Give it a few turns. And look at how pointy and razor sharp, not razor sharp, pinpoint sharp that tip is. That'll give you a lot of, lot of ability to fill in those it also has sharpening blades up in here for the, your clutch style pencils. But really, really nice little sharpener. $10. I got it at a local art store. So anyways, now what I'm doing is I'm looking at my reference. I'm going to say, okay, he's got this orange reddish glow in the skin in certain areas so I'm gonna go back over lightly add in these oranges this is all I'm doing I'm gonna do a couple things in this little areas just to show you a general idea of what's going on I'm using a very, very light touch with just a slight angle on that tip. And then I roll my pencil in my hand as I go, and that'll keep your point. And again, you don't want to press down real hard yet. That's at the end when you want to blend all the colors together if, if you like. If you so like. But anyways. So we got all these little textures in here. I've seen a lot of artists. They want uh, videos on YouTube. And they're wanting to get rid of all that texture. Well. And that's good. That's good if you want to do that. I, I tend to feel in my. The way I've been going right now as those textures might help you. I mean, all these years of airbrushing, I realize those textures create skin pores and can be useful. And the lighter you go, the longer your tooth of your paper lasts. Now you can fill in these by really... See, I got too dark a spot there. I don't like that. I can erase it. I can also take the edge of an X-Acto blade. And I can lightly take away that little dark spot. And what it is, is a little bit of the tooth of the paper might have been raised even further. So more colored uh, pigment went on that there. It, that's pretty much you can use that method. You can also go back in here if you want to keep this highlight. It can erase back into that to get that highlight nice. I got two highlights right in here. This is pencil. You can erase. It's kind of cool. I'm kind of digging working with this. So he's got... There's a little highlight on the skin right here. And actually, this spot's a little bit dark, so I want to... 
rub some of that away. Right there. Paying attention to the shape of that cheek. Now you say there's a lot of black on that. I should rub that off. You're right, because I don't want to use that and smudge up my drawing. Let's take that down a little more. Nice, nice. That worked out nice. Now in there, he's got a little more pinkish look to that flesh tone. So we got a flesh, a pink color flesh tone and it's 583. And we can go back in here now that we've lightened that. And we can add the pink back in where the pink is. I've told a lot of people and advice about drawing portraits and such over the years. You can also layer this on top and tint that with a pink tone. Okay. Yeah, looks good. Um, but I've told them to, when you're drawing, don't just draw lines because the face ain't really made up of lines. You draw the shapes of the shadows, the way the shadow comes down here. And then you fill in that shape of that shadow. And you fill in the shape of this shadow. And, that, and that's how you build your, your face structure. So this pink comes down in here, adjacent to his lips. So we'll take this pink... And you just start moving this pink into this area very lightly. You can use different directions to get a better layer. And just build this tones gradually, making sure you pay attention to your reference photos. There's no way in my imagination could I ever be able to. Uh, he's got more pink up in here, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna glaze this up here with this pink. Let's see, I'm rubbing with the side of the pencil up here, just toning over it. That red was too too harsh. using the side of the pencil just to glaze it over. But anyways, like I said, I'm, I'm just teaching myself and learning how to use these pencils. And I really like the Caran d'Ache Luminance. Uh, I'll say one thing, um, if you like my channel, and you want to help support me, uh, I'm going to ask for money. I mean, put that right out there. Sorry. Uh, I know it's not a cool thing for a lot of people to hear. But if you want to support what I do and that, uh, I want to build some more of my colored pencil arsenal and uh, help with my supplies and I need I want to get a need want a desire to build my colored pencil stock and the 100 set of these pencils is 300 and some dollars so you know, if you want to support me, you don't have to. I mean, my Lord and my God, he takes care of me. So anything he knows I need, he'll supply. But you can make donations to my PayPal account. It's fredaw61 at rochester.com dot rr.com 
And if you're going to give a gift, you can give a gift through PayPal. And just make sure you do uh, payment through family and friends because otherwise they will, PayPal likes to take a fee out of it. Now, yes, I'm using green here. Like I said, there's a lot of green tint on his flesh tone down here because of the reflection off the field, the green of the field. I mean, I don't have to use the green if I don't want to, but it's also taking the tone down. I don't know if you can notice, and right now I'm, I'm really getting in these shadowy uh, areas. Well, probably what I do is I'll go over with a little more of the reddish tone. And that'll, it'll balance it out and neutralize. And also, like I mentioned in the intro, um, I've changed the name of my YouTube channel to Fred Wagner Art Studios because I'm broadening, I'm trying to broaden out into other areas so that I'm not just doing airbrush. I've taught a lot on airbrush. I've given a lot of information uh, to help others build their foundation in airbrush. And I, I really feel God leading me to other areas now. Other areas that uh, just expand what he wants to do through me. reaching more people, sharing the gospel as I go. I praise the Lord, uh, Easter's coming up. Always a wonderful time. One of my favorite times to celebrate what the Lord did on the cross for me and for all of us through our faith in him and our acceptance of what was done on the cross. It's an awesome thing the Lord did, providing himself a sacrifice and not making us rely on our own abilities, which suffer greatly in my case, to do and be righteous. I can't. But you see what I'm doing here? And I can take and go in with, uh, on Brown's purple, actually enhances the richness of the Brown's. You don't want to put the, the violet or purple on top of in the lighter skin areas, only in the darker tones. It brings out the richness of the browns. Now you see my pencil tip is not sharp enough. I'm just starting to blend these together and bring in some more depth of color and try not to muddy everything up. Another thing that could help at this time, that when you step back, these violets are gonna blend right in and it's gonna really make it look beautiful. Uh, now I can go in with a darker uh, brown 
and maybe hit some of these skin marks or See, there's one right here. So I'm real light. I don't want to draw lines on here. I just want to build up like this little mole that's there. This will help me with orientation later as I put in these spots on the flesh. Okay. And then there's another spot, uh, let's see, it's right across from the bottom of the lip. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, if I go too heavy, I can scrape over with that X-Acto knife, uh, to take it off. You just don't want to go too deep into it and lose the texture of the paper. Anyways, see, that's right there, there. And then there's a shadow on the cheekbone. Just letting this build really slowly. So I'm, I'm thinking of changing even the title that I put on my intros to Papa's Art Studio. Instead of Papa's Painting Tips. So this could be a 20, 30, 40 hour video if I want to keep going on all this with you guys. But this is the, in a, a sense, what I'm doing with my uh, techniques and art. I put other things on my channel too that aren't. So, see, I just goofed that up. I bumped it too hard with my hand. Just using the side of the blade to scrape lightly, just on where that line hit. There. But anyways, uh, hope you're enjoy. You've enjoyed this little uh, bit of information and tips and tricks and. And hopefully you can use some of this in uh, in your endeavors in the art world. It's always nice when there's someone you can, uh, or something you can find that helps you. Because we struggle. A lot of us struggle. Ain't gonna lie. And when you don't have something you can refer to, it takes a lot longer to try to figure it out on your own. So, and that's my that's my little purpose here on the on YouTube, is just to help give a little information, stuff that I'm learning, stuff that I'm working on. And believe me, this is a learning curve for me. I mean, far cry from what I did as a young man uh, working with colored pencils. Okay. Hope you've enjoyed, and I will keep working on this. And uh, check out my Facebook page. Uh, I usually post every day uh, how much farther I've gotten as I grow this painting along. God bless.